My name is David Helfand. I'm a professor of astronomy at Columbia University in New York City. And this is Inside a Scientist's Suitcase. I started out observing radio pulsars just a few years after they were discovered in the early 1970s. Radio pulsar is a representation of the most extreme kind of object we have in the universe. It's a star that's died, its core has collapsed, and it's reached a size about the size of Manhattan, but with the mass of an entire sun. Furthermore, because they collapse from a very large star down to a very tiny star, they spin very fast, just like figure skaters when they in their death spiral, they put out their arms and they spin around like this, and as they draw their arms in, they spin faster. That's conservation of angular momentum. So stars do that too. So they're very dense and they're very rapidly rotating. And the third thing they have is an intense magnetic field, maybe 10 trillion times the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. And so as a consequence, they put out these beams of radiation. And as they spin by, you see a flash, and then another flash, and then another flash, just like a lighthouse rotates and you see it flashing at you. They're remarkable objects because they allow us to learn about the density of nuclear matter. They allow tests of Einstein's theory of relativity. They're excellent probes of interstellar gas and the material along the line of sight. And they provide lots of insights into various branches of physics and astronomy. I do travel a lot. It's probably one of my favorite parts of astronomy. I think I've been to sort of 36 countries, and that's certainly one of the great perks of being a scientist. I've got a pretty routine set of things I bring with me. You spend a lot of time on airplanes, it's really important to have noise-canceling headphones. Then, as now, it's uh, snowing outside, so you always need your little hat, so I have my little beret. You always need a remote control, because if you're giving a talk, it's like me anyway, you can't stand in front of a microphone. So you, I wander around, and therefore you have to have a little remote. And this is a little weird, but I give a lot of public talks on astronomy, and one of the most difficult things for people to grasp is the scale that we study, the, the, how, how vast the distances are. And so I always have a little analogy I use with the solar system, and it always starts out with an orange being the sun. Now, a normal orange would get rotten, right? But this orange has been around so long, it's been sort of petrified, and so it acts like a perfect sun, and I can say, here's the sun, and then the Earth on this scale, if the sun were this size, would be a little tiny grain of dust about 15 feet away, and I always walk out into the audience and hand it to someone and ask them to hold the Earth for the rest of the talk. I like traveling. That's part of what I really love what I do. But I guess what I like most is teaching, actually. Uh, one's not supposed to say that as an astronomer. One's supposed to be dedicated to one's research. Uh, but I spend most of my time teaching undergraduate non-science majors. And I use astronomy as a vehicle to discuss that. But mostly what I'm trying to do is get them to think to learn how to construct knowledge from themselves, to be skeptical about information they receive from the world, so much of which is nonsense, and to develop scientific habits of mind which will serve them well no matter what profession they're in throughout their lives.